Welcome to the weekly shear of the Zer Shimshon. It's uh, Yud Base <clears throat> Yud Base Shrat <laughs> and uh, Tavshin A Gimel. And uh, this week's parsha is Bishalach, and of course the pair of Shira and the famous uh, Shira Sayam. A lot of Devore Divrei Torah talked about in this week's parsha, and. Um, i just like to share a, a short one with a little segula. There's many segulas here this week. <clears throat> All right, the, the condition of this with the sea. God made a condition at my sabrishis with the sea, what it should do when it came to Kriyas Yamsuf. Now it says, Vayam vayet maisha es yadai ala yam v'yasha vayam lefnais baiker le'e sonai The maisha stretched out his hand over the sea and toward the morning, the water went back to its power. That's the direct, direct translation of Eisano. Okay, by rearranging the letters and the vowels of the word Le Eisano, <clears throat> or Le Eitano, to its power, it can be read Le Tano, in accordance with the stipulation at creation. That's the Shmais Rabbah. This means that Hashem and the ocean had a pact in place from the time of creation that the ocean would split when it would be commanded to do so. If the Pasuk is informing us about an agreement that was made with the sea at the time of creation, shouldn't it have been alluded to at the moment that the sea split? And not here? After the waves came crashing down over the Egyptians and returned to their original places? And we know there's another Midrash that's not a contradiction to this, but it did... It says, what did the sea see? The sea saw something and it ran. What did it see? So it actually refused to split until it saw the iron of Yosef at Tzadik. And because Yosef at Tzadik ran away from Potiphar's wife, so he, the sea also decided it's going to run away and split. <clears throat> so in the schus of Yosef at Tzadik. So anyway, the Zohar says a different Pershat. In Pershat Vayakil, it says that Hashem made a condition with the sea on the third day of creation. The ocean would split and the, but allow B'nai Yisrael to pass through on dry land and would drown the Egyptians. As, as it says, the water went back to its power. From the Zohar, we see that Hashem made two separate conditions with the sea. One is that the sea would turn into dry ground for the Jewish people. And the second one is that it would then revert to being a sea and drowned the Egyptians. Um, <clears throat> according to this explanation, the Pasuk is word perfect in every way. The best place to allude to the agreement between Hashem and the sea is, the, is after the ocean, after the sea, right, now it's not an ocean, returns to its normal state of existence. Since the fact that the waves came crashing down to drown the Egyptians meant that Hashem's conditions had been fulfilled exactly as he'd instruct. So that's from Zera Shimshon, this week's Parsha, Ois Zion. <clears throat> now there's a small, I had to pick here which, from which uh, Segula to choose, but I like this one. <clears throat> At a company in the States, a bunch of employees got together during lunchtime to celebrate a seal made by one of the workers. At the Suda, one of the assembly rose to address the crowd and told over the Zera Shimson's vort on the topic of Hoidu La Shem Kitaif. Most of the people at the mill had never heard of the Zer Shimson before and wanted to know when and where he had lived. The speaker did the best to paint a verbal picture about the author with the limited information at his disposal. The Zer Shimson lived at the same time as the Orachaima Kaddish. Although he had a son, he passed away during the Zerah Shimshon's lifetime. That was his only son. This prompted him to write the classic work, his classic work, and especially the introduction, which captivates people immediately. I have myself personally witnessed quite a few Yeshuas in the area of Shaduchim. But why take my word for it? You can get a hold of the Sefer and learn it yourself. It was an emotional moment. One of the people sitting there had a brother who was already 28 years old. When he heard the way his friend was talking about his the safer, a safer he'd never heard of before, he decided to purchase a copy and see for himself. 
Instead of learning the Sefer on his own, the man began studying at Becharusa with his brother. Two months later, the brother was a chassid. Mazel tov. Okay, so everybody should have Shafa, Bracha, V'Hatzlacham, and this week's Parsha. And if you didn't say Parsha Zaman, say it over. It's the Ace Ratzayin, and this Shabbos is a special time for Parsha Shira. That's a special Parsha of Hashbos, of all the Yeshuas and the Hamas and Shiduchim. And Kriya Sayam is like Parnasa and Shiduchim. So everybody have a Vatzlich, all the Inyani of Yeshuas, called to them.